For today's build, I'm unboxing and assembling a saw stop table saw. That's coming up. So I took a leap and purchased the saw stop contractor saw with a 36 inch workspace and mobile base. This is a huge investment and if you're like me it's not something that you can just dive into without a lot of consideration. I'll be honest this was scary to drop two thousand dollars on a table saw but I realized that my current saw is holding me back and if I'm going to get a new saw I need to do it right. If you want to skip ahead to the build I've put markers in the description but I want to share why I picked this saw. Why saw stop? Well, the number one reason was safety. All table saws come with a blade guard, but let's be honest, most woodworkers remove them because they're in the way. When you look at saw safety, there are three things that are likely to go wrong. The first one is the wood binds up and gets launched across the room, putting a hole in whatever it hits, which is most likely gonna be you. Second, the risk of dropping your wood back onto the saw or dropping your hand down on the saw blade, well, that's what the blade guard's for. Third is getting your fingers too close to the blade and earning the nickname Nubs. This is why you buy a saw stop. The blade immediately retracts when it comes into contact with flesh. This is because the saw sends an electronic pulse through the blade and stops when it senses the ground. You, as the user, are grounded, and most people just walk away with a nick of the skin. No, I'm not gonna demonstrate this. There are hundreds of demos where they've taken hot dogs being held against the blade to, to demonstrate. This is expensive and destructive, requiring a new blade and brake cartridge. I don't have a hundred dollars to throw out just for a demo. There are cabinet versions of this saw, but one, I don't have the space for it. And two, it requires me to run power because they're 220 volt. And three, they are incredibly more expensive and SawStop is not sponsoring this. I spent my own money to get this saw. Let's get started with this build. To start with, this is probably the most organized and detailed packaging I've ever seen. Each step is color coded and the packaging is coded to match. Then as you open each section, it's outlined so that you don't have to unpack all of it until you need it. So a couple of notes about this saw. If you're picking it up from the store yourself, it's pretty heavy. You're definitely gonna need some help unloading it. If you can, I highly recommend buying the add-on cast iron extensions. It comes with stamped metal ones, which would be fine if they were not branded with the saw stop name. The letters are about a half inch deep and it makes it hard to move thinner wood using a cross cut since the wood drops into the stamped areas. Make sure that you assemble your saw stop over a flat floor. My garage slopes away from the relief cuts in the floor it's only about a quarter inch slope, but that's enough to make the legs drag on the extension. Well, that wraps up this build. It was a short video, but it actually took a little over an hour and a half to put the saw together. This is by far the best purchase I've made for the shop. I'm no longer afraid of my old table saw blowing up on me, and my workflow has drastically increased since I don't have to use a circular saw and straight edge to cut all of my long cuts. Thanks for hanging out with me during this build. Until next time, I'm Brad, and this has been My Simple Build.